Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Oh, what a beautiful day it is, and uh, it's so good to be here with you. <sighs> the moon has been shining, and it's full moon, bright and shiny, absolutely gorgeous. So, welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. My name is Lisa Pabari. Uh, and uh, this Heal Talk Tuesday, we're going to be talking about negative people and naysayers. Do you have naysayers in your life? Hmm. And let's talk about that. Let's talk about naysayers in our life and what I like to call it. What is their purpose in our life? The same way as we have supporters in our life, we need balance two days ago i was with a friend we had an incredible day together hi michael hi harry and we did the spa time everything and she said thank you for bringing balance in my life i needed this time to get away and find this balance because i am constantly with clients that are negating what I say or they are solving problems all the time. Yes. In life, there is so much of goodness and so much negativity. If we were to look at news late at night, most of the news we hear is negative. And in the morning, we wake up and most people pray in the morning or pray at night. So we start with a good intention. And for those of us who meditate and pick up a cup of coffee and sit, even for five minutes, we are creating this wonderful balance in our life. So today, I want to talk about the naysayers that truly push and lift something in us and what would that be i don't know if you have experienced it or not but since i remember i was the type of a person who said challenge me and watch me now there are people who are not in that they like someone that mentors them, supports them, empowers them, and lifts them up. And there are people who, when you challenge them, they push and they grow. I like to always use this uh, analogy of the chrysalis, coming out of this chrysalis. And how do we come out of this chrysalis is we crawl and then peel away that skin. And as the worm comes out of the chrysalis that's when it becomes a butterfly and flies it's like giving birth right so when i was in high school i was challenged and it was taking that challenge right at the end of high school when i wanted to get my car and this is an example that i'd like to give is my Parents had gifted me a car, and I didn't like the car. Few months after the car, having it, not even a few months, but 10 months, 11 months into it, less than a year, what did I do? Because I wanted that speed car, I went to Bob Smith Toyota in Long Street. I, that's a that's a plug for them. I went there and I got my Nissan 280ZX. How did I do it? I got it with my own money. And when I came home, my father was in a shock that I had done that. And we had, um, we did an agreement together. He said, if you want this car, you have to pay for the gas. You have to pay for the insurance. You pay for every all the payments as well. And that was an agreement. Now, 17 and a half, 18 years old, I was working part-time. At that time, it was uh, May Company. 
But what did that do to me? It pushed me to work harder. It pushed me to earn my, my own money. It pushed me to stand upon an agreement and live up to the decision that I had made. The same thing when I was in paralegal school, one of the hardest classes was wills and trusts for me. I just could not understand. And the teacher, the teacher made me sit right in front and constantly push me and ask me for the longest time I resented her. But you know what? That's the class that I walked out with a 4.0 average. Of course, that's about me. But how many of us truly want someone to push us? Want someone that sees the best in us, sees the potential in us, and then pushes our button. And what do we do with the button? So in my work, I like to say, I take my clients into a place of safety and security, which it could be like an elevator. And you know how elevators have buttons? And you take some of those buttons that are lit in your life that have pushed you in a very mean way, in a negative way, and put those buttons out of order. That's one choice. You can dismantle, dismiss some of those buttons that push you, push you hard. But if you were to sit back and instead of putting that button out of order, you call upon your inner wisdom and sit back and say, is this person becoming a naysayer with good intention or is this naysayer that is pushing my buttons and constantly uh, nagging at me, is that person coming from their own negative experiences? Are they reflecting something of their own fears, their own experiences, and they are just projecting it upon me? Or how do I take this and make this work for myself? Now, let me give you an example. If I have a client who comes in to stop smoking and they are ready to stop smoking, but their own family members are smokers, then I can say, are you ready to stop smoking? And can you handle being a non-smoker when you have family members that are still smoking because you can you can be a non-smoker and sit comfortably in front of people who are smoking because at that very moment it's about your health your decision and remember always your choice what you think what you do what you put in your body and the decisions that you make for yourself for your wellness for your health is for you not for them. They can't make you happy. As a matter of fact, them smoking in a way is disregarding what your decision is. And yet, that should not hinder you and stop you from becoming a non-smoker. The same way as if you want to go on a diet. It's not what you want uh, to create, but why is it that you want to drop the weight for so if you want to become healthy and go exercise and drop the weight and there's people who are constantly putting cookies in front of you, desserts in front of you, you can easily, I have worked with clients that within their subconscious, they choose that, that food is no longer acceptable. Not while I am on this healthy, conscious, well-balanced um, journey. I like to call it a journey. So once you have that decision, that's what you honor. Now, why do the naysayers, excuse me, why do the naysayers come into your life? 
because the one who puts the ice cream or the cookies and everything, it's because of, they've already formed the opinion that because you have done so in the past, you're going to do it again. And eventually, if they put it in front of you, you're going to succumb to your past and take a bite or eat it all. You can easily walk away or you can have a nibble off of it and say thank you very much. So that way you satisfy them and you have stopped denying yourself what you want and then you can also walk away. Now, when they project what fears of their own and they project that you have failed in the past and when they turn around and say you know what i know you've gone through this diet many times i don't think it's going to work yeah you've quit before i don't really think you are ready to stop smoking you can't quit. Haven't you done that before? Yeah, I've heard it before. Now, sometimes, yes, you have done it many, many times. But just because it failed in the past or you could not keep it going does not mean it's not going to work this time. And I want to sincerely let you know that even Einstein tried so many times the same formula over and over, over and over, and then added one more formula. Even the person who invented electricity, right, or telephone, or even Steve Jobs, every one of them, they did not succeed on the first time. And I bet you anything. And if you look at the history, you will see so many naysayers. People who publish a book, not the ones that we go on and create self-publish, but the ones who truly published the book in the past, even nowadays, there are so many no, no, no. Actors and actresses, how many times do you see and hear that you're not fit for this part? But it doesn't matter, it doesn't mean you're not going to land the next job. So, naysayers, in a way, is fantastic. Like my client who came in yesterday, believed in her own mind, although she wants to get married, that she does not look good enough for a man to propose to her. And she hasn't even got on a date more than five times. So it is the messages that we have come to believe that it's negative. So what do we do with naysayers? I like to consider one thing. Do you believe their fears, their projections? Or are you ready to step up your own choices, your own decisions? You see, when we set a goal, and if we constantly believe the journey is the beauty of it. And if I set a goal, which I did just a few months ago, and now every step that I take, I'm like, oh, yes, the goal is not so much my journey, but the goal is to surround myself with that dream, with that intention that I had. And believe it or not, I've had naysayers from family. I've had naysayers from community. I have naysayers from so many people. But if I were to think that that is going to stop me from the intention of the bigger picture, I would never be in the work that I am doing. Even the naysayers who say, why do you go on every Tuesday and speak? Do you really think that makes a difference? It may not. But if I have 
made a difference in one person's life, that's good enough for me. So the intention is from here to your goal, when you set it, stop worrying about your journey and have the intention of your end. And there is no end. Remember that. So stop concentrating the here and now, because as long as you're concentrating the here and now, although Eckhart Tolle says be present, is being present with your intention instead of concentrating in here and now. Because if you do, then you're stuck here, not into the end goal of yours, not your dream goal, not your desire. So if my desire is to become, let's say, I'm just coming up, 111 uh, pounds within, by the end of August, August 30th, 111 pounds, which I am not. I am on that journey. So my intention is 111, okay? And by August 30th, I stand on that scale and it says 111, then I have achieved that goal. But that is not the intention. The intention is to be healthier, it's saying, yes, I did it. Now what do I do next? There is no end goal. End is when we're no longer here or when we choose, I'm done. I've already done it. What's my next project? So I like to take things not as what is my resolution, but what is my intention and become goal-oriented, one project at a time. Here's my goal. So how do we negate naysayers and negative people in life? Number one, who am I? Is that person pulling me into becoming better or are they pushing me? And if they are pushing me, how do I negate that? Number two, come out of your comfort zone. So sometimes the naysayers are projecting something that you can take it and reverse it, turn it into light and say, wow, how do I come out of my comfort zone and truly explode and expand and live up to my best and fullest intention? Number three, when you have an intention, safeguard your intention. Keep it a secret. My grandmother used to say, of course, grandma again. My grandmother used to say, you constantly share everything. You always give too much information. You spread the word. You can't keep a secret. And when you can't keep a secret, everybody knows, and it's no longer a secret. So safeguard your secretive intentions. Find the people who will support you, empower you, and step with you. They walk the journey with you. Find the right people because once you set your intention, believe it or not, they're always there. And people are willing to help. Truly, there are so many people who want to help and see you succeed. I know nowadays, I surround myself with people who help me succeed, help me come through the cr chrysalis. And I always keep my naysayers at hand because they always bring me to reality. It's not always this fluff desire, but it's expanding to the goals. Now, Evaluate their background. Where are they coming from? And when the naysayers truly, are they talking about experience? Because sometimes we have to pray for the ones who have gone through it and know better. So sometimes it is the words of wisdom that become negative and listen to them. And remember, as one of my best naysayers that I love truly, and I respect her, their word is not word 
of God. It is not the Bible. You say thank you. And you open your heart and you ask them to expand and open their heart and expand their mind so that together you can transform. And remember, it's always one person's perspective. You can always find others who will help and lift you in your journey. And the last thing you can do, if you are in a place that it's like a family member, negative family members, you can tune in and tune them out, right? Tune in so you can tune them out. So I hope these points were beneficial to you and take the negative with a grain of salt and see what you can do with it. And you know what you can do with it? Remember salt is also iodine. And for those who have iodine deficiency, we need salt. Two days ago, I went to the spa and I laid after a wonderful massage on those beautiful, well, what is this uh, salt, um, salt lights and the rocks, salt rocks, and the heat and everything. I'm like, ah, heaven on earth. So I hope this message was beneficial to you. And if there's anything I can do to help you, support you, and walk on your journey to become healthier, stronger, and better, I am here for you. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Psych by Roberts is a good book and method to handle subconscious mind, and I believe hypnotherapy is the solution. And this, you know better than anyone else. Thank you for your great work. Blessings and light upon you. Thank you, Vahe, especially coming from you, because you're also in this work of helping others lifting them up and uh, shedding a light in the lives of people who need your assistance. Thank you, sir. Um, it's all our subconscious unless we alter that subconscious belief. True. Our subconscious mind is the programming. I like to call it a, a blueprint. And when we buy a new house, we can go to the city we can go to the planning and zoning, open that blueprint and say, you know what? I want to gut this entire house or parts of this house and keep the foundation and create a new blueprint and bring a new architect in and start a whole new platform and a design. This is my house. So for all of you, thank you for being a part of Heal Talk Tuesdays. Honor your home and remember that only you can change your mind, change your heart, and your subconscious mind. That is the blueprint can also be modified. This is Lisa Bubari, and today has been the Hill Talk Tuesday session of how to expand and change the naysayers into the best motivational way that pushes you to grow and come out to fly. Goodbye and thank you.